In 2017, the Chinese Gili Holding Group purchased a 51% controlling share in Lotus. And Lotus are now marketing a 400 brake horsepower edition of the Lotus Amira i4 in China. That's some 40 brake horsepower and 37 pound foot of torque more than the European markets. Is Lotus prioritizing China over the European markets? And if so, why? Gilly now own 51% of Lotus and Atika Automotive own the remaining 49%. In effect, that means that Gilly have control over Lotus. When comparing how the Lotus Amira is sold in China to the UK, there's three key differences. Performance, pricing and branding. Here predominantly we're going to focus on performance and pricing. With regards to branding, the only difference is how Lotus brand the rear badging of the car from what I can tell. Instead of having just Lotus on the badge at the back of the car, they call the Lotus Amira Lotus NYO. And that NYO is Chinese for new. So in effect it just says Lotus new instead of Lotus on the back of the car. And that's just a Chinese thing, that's just how they're branding the car in China. With regards to performance, first of all I'm going to give you a little bit of back history on the i4 AMG. The Lotus Amira i4 has a single turbo straight four AMG derived power plant mated to an eight speed dual clutch transmission. Now this power plant is based on the M139 Mercedes-Benz AMG engine, which is also known for the Mercedes-Benz A45. We have great experience of the performance of the Mercedes-Benz AMG A45 because when we were driving Modball, we had an A45 right up our backside when we were coming into the Brecon Beacons in Wales and we could not shake it even though we were in our 458. Now subsequently we spoke to the driver and we found out that they had their toe right on the metal so it was near as damn it standing on the accelerator to keep up with us. But notwithstanding that is a very powerful single turbo straight four power plant. So it's not surprising that they, they're adopting that in the Lotus Amira i4. Now the M139 is indeed a special engine. It's the most powerful four cylinder engine in serial production, producing 208 horsepower per litre or 104 horsepower per cylinder. It's well known that the M139 power plant can be tuned to produce more brake horsepower than is provided standard. One of the things that enables this two litre power plant to produce more brake horsepower is it has an intercooler mated to a water and air cooled system. Therefore it's plumbed directly into the water cool system of the engine and it has a separate radiator to assist in cooling the intercooler or in cooling the air that goes into the intercooler. This obviously en enables the turbo to produce more brake horsepower. The 2 litre AMG power plant marketed for the Lotus Amira i4 in the Chinese market is marketed as 400 brake horsepower and 354 pound foot of torque. Now when you compare that with the UK market, the i4 is marketed as 360 brake horsepower and 317 pound foot of torque. There you've got 40 brake horsepower difference and 37 pound foot of torque difference. Today's video is actually being recorded on Christmas Day. Yep, no rest for the wicked. And I'm dressing something that I hope befits the day as well. So we'd really appreciate if you're enjoying the video, if you could give the video a like please. And if you're not subscribed, please think about subscribing. It's very important to us for going forward. The pricing for the Lotus Amira in China is 902,800 CNY for the i4 and 1,118,000 CNY for the Lotus Amira V6. Now CNY in effect stands for Yuan Remimbi and I realise I'm probably crucifying that, that statement because that, um, I, I don't speak Chinese obviously so I apologise for all our Chinese viewers who may be watching but I'll just say CNY for now. Converting those figures over to British pounds we're looking at around 100,000 for the Lotus Mira i4 and around 123,500 for the Lotus Mira V6. When looking at the base prices for the Lotus Mira for the UK market, the Lotus Mira i4 is priced at around 81,500 British pounds and the Lotus Mira V6 is priced at around 86,000 pounds. So that's a massive difference when you compare that with the Chinese market. Why is that? 
The Chinese market has substantially different taxes to, than to the UK market. And remember, this car is built in Heffel in the UK. Therefore, it's in, in effect imported into China. It's not made in China. A lot of the parts are provided from China. So a lot of the parts are made in China, but the car is actually built in the UK and imported into China. Therefore, you have certain import duties. So when a car is sold in the Chinese market, the car is impacted by 25% customs tax, 17% VAT, and between one and 40% consumption tax depending on the displacement capacity of that car. So to loop back to the question that I raised at the beginning of this video, is Gilly and therefore Lotus prioritizing the Chinese market over the European market with regards to sales of the Lotus Amira? Well that has to be answered in multiple stages. Well as we can see the pricing is different because there's substantially additional taxes incurred when you import a car into the Chinese market. As I said, you've got the customs duty, you've got VAT, and you've got the consumption tax. And then when we look at the different models that were released in the Chinese market, the perception is that Lotus weren't going to deliver the V6 in the Chinese market. Lotus were only going to deliver the Lotus Amira i4. Therefore, the, they wanted to map the Lotus Amira i4 to the V6 model that was delivered in the European market. Now the specification of the Lotus Amira that was being delivered in the European market was the V6 at 360 brake horsepower and 310 pound foot of torque. Lotus didn't want to be perceived to be shortchanging their Chinese market. So what they decided to do was increase the performance of the Lotus Amira i4 to 400 brake horsepower and 354 pound foot of torque. That's sort of mapping in with the V6 that was currently released in the European market. Now, of course, what Lotus didn't realize at the time was that the i4 was going to be delayed. And so to overcome this shortfall in timeframes, what they decided to do was import a, a substantial volume of Lotus Amira V6 models from the European market into China. Of course, those, those V6s that they imported would have been subject to the same taxes as the i4 was subject to, therefore customs tax, VAT and consumption tax. Now there is also the perception downstream that Lotus were going to change the Lotus Amira i4 specification from 400 brake horsepower and 354 pound foot of torque in the Chinese market to the European market to bring it all in alignment to 360 brake horsepower and 317 pound foot of torque. Now I don't really believe that because I feel that there would be quite a substantial fallout with the customer base because if you can, can you imagine though if initial customers had been able to buy a 400 brake horsepower 354 pound foot of torque specified Lotus Amira i4 and then downstream that was no longer available later customers could only buy 360 brake horsepower and with 317 pound foot of torque I think that there would be a lot of complaints would be a lot of issues and a lot of fallback and pushback from the Chinese Chinese customer base so my perception is yes they only intended to deliver the Lotus Amira i4 to the Chinese marketplace but because they wanted to map it to the V6 model that was in the European market at the time that they were always going to up the specification to 400 brake horsepower and and to 354 pound foot of torque. So I'm going to put this out to you now to the viewers. What's your perception? Do you think it's fair that Lotus are marketing an up spec i4 in the Chinese marketplace when compared to the European market and to the UK market? Do you think that's fair? Let me know in the comments below. I'd be very interested to know your viewpoints. I just want to say a big thank you to a couple of people that have been really helpful to our channel, especially supporting us with regards to giving us some direction in certain areas um, to help us move forward with the channel. And those two people are James Martin, i.e. JM on cars, and Andrew Morgan from Watchfinder UK. Thanks a lot for guys. Your support has really been appreciated for 2023.